So you know me. I have four assignments due soon for school that I should be working on. And what do I do? I enter another game jam with my good friend, Spicy Chicken. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. Today, I will be talking about the process of working on the 2021 Microsoft Paint Jam. The restrictions of the game were simple. All the game art had to be made using only MS Paint. Yes, MS Paint. The technological advancement that comes pre-installed on every Windows computer. And let me tell you, it was challenging. Oh yeah, and the game had to be completed within 48 hours. The stimulus for the jam was Andy Warhol's art piece, Campbell's Soup Cans. And naturally, we decided to make the game about soup. I started off by making a progress bar in the form of a soup can. To avoid anti-aliasing, I used the pencil tool with the largest thickness. This is not pixel art. I repeat, this is not pixel art. I know my channel is all about pixel art, but the canvas size is just way too big for pixel art. We were going for a really messy, sketchy sort of look instead. It was actually really refreshing not to worry about every little pixel. Stray, abandoned pixels just added to the aesthetic. One of the optional challenges of the game jam was to use Comic Sans as the only in-game font. Yuck. I have to say, this physically hurt me as I selected the font type. I typed out the word Campbell's for the label, but I had trouble with anti-aliasing. Paint blended the grey and white, leaving me with some very light grey pixels around the edges of the text. In hindsight, I would have used this feature against a red background to match the label color. What do you need to make soup? Ingredients, so it was only fitting that I made some for the game. I made three different versions of all the ingredients, so when played back to back, it would give the products a jittery effect. I think it matches the rough sketchy style, makes it feel a bit more alive. We also needed a stopwatch and mine too. Then I worked on the game's background, which was a kitchen. I made sure the dimensions were 700 by 700 pixels to match Spicy's request. I had to use a lot of the fill tool, lines and rectangles just because the canvas size was so large and the pencil tool had a maximum thickness that just wouldn't cut it. When working on the vent, I didn't like how much contrast there was, so I decided to put some low opacity color over it. Paint doesn't have opacity, so I had to use the marker brush to get the desired effect. Some cans tied the scene together. I then made some various user interface elements. I'm happy with the buttons and I like that the bomb matches the idea of exit or discard progress. The last thing I created using this terribly simple program was a title logo. My final thoughts? While it was frustrating, I still think it's pretty cool that we managed to make everything with MS Paint. For a program that has made fun of so much, I think it does the trick. However, there were still some very frustrating barriers along the way. Colors were a pain. They really were. The only way I could make a palette was by eyedropping each color and selecting edit colors. This worked for a few, but since there are only 10 spare slots, it soon becomes difficult to manage them. Hotkeys. Oh my god. Hotkeys. I never thought of myself as someone who only uses hotkeys, who will go out of their way to press 5 keys at once just to not have to move the mouse a tiny little bit. But doing this challenge really made me see how important they are. Just a hotkey for the eyedropper would have been all I needed. It was so hard to paint when every time you wanted to change colour, you had to drag your mouse all the way to the eyedropper and back to the color. There were no layers or transparency, so I had to rely on transparent selection, which didn't work half the time. Every time I wanted to change the dimensions of my canvas, I had to look at the bottom of the screen and nudge it around. There weren't any tools for animation, so all the frames had to be eyeballed and then exported individually. But there were some things I did like about the program, mainly the fact that there is no exporting required with only one file for each drawing. Also, the fact that you can start drawing as soon as you open up the program. Overall, it was a nice change from what I usually do, even just letting go and making some sketchy, unrefined artworks. It's not something I would want to do often, and I'm very glad to be back in Acebrite, but it was a good experience to have. It taught me that you don't always need a fancy program, and no matter how much you pay for software, 
it will always just be a tool for you to produce your creative vision onto canvas. Thanks for watching, and the game's linked in the description.